When we test our saltwater tanks, we want to know exactly what's in our tank. That's why we're testing. Over-the-counter test kits work all right. ICP got us more and more accurate, but now ICPanalysis.com has mass spec ICP, which you say is way better. Tell me why, Steve. Well, traditional ICP, ICP OES, it works off of what's called optical spectrometry. And it's good. It allows us to see and record stuff down in the parts per million and in the upper parts per billion really well. The difference between mass spec is we're not looking at optical stuff or energy. We're actually measuring the mass of the element. So we have actually less interference than the OES does and we get more accuracy because our detectors for measuring mass are a lot more accurate than the cameras are for detecting the optical wavelength and energy. So that's why we went from parts per million to parts per billion. Actually, we can read into the parts per trillion. Parts per trillion. Yeah. So you can get it really, really accurate, and then we can tell me how much to dose accurately. Then my question is, if I want cobalt to say two parts per billion, if I end up at 20 parts per billion, is that really going to affect my tank? Some elements, it can affect your tank. Other elements, it won't. And is some of that accuracy in where we're dosing, if we are 0.2 instead of 1, is that where we're going to see not so much death and necrosis, but color changes that color it's obvious really want. That, that's what ICP, in my opinion, is about. When you start dealing with your trace elements, it's about enhancing your colors, giving them, just like our bodies, we want our trace elements, they want their trace elements, which is why, like say, cobalt helps out with some blue coloring, and uh, then you have like zinc, which helps out with health and immunity and stuff. Two elements that are very interesting is zinc and uh, iron. We want them in there, they're good for colors and health and immunity. But if you get too high, it'll kill things. And the other thing is, zinc and iron have a tendency to absorb what's in the system really fast, like within 24 hours. So if you add your zinc and add your iron, within 16, 24 hours, most of what you add is gonna be gone. Mm -hmm. So if you're actually reading something higher than 20 parts per billion and it, you haven't just recently dosed your tank before you send in the test, you're going to start possibly having a problem in the long term with your stony corals, especially acrylics. I mean, those are the things that are really sensitive to that. Your LPS and, S and uh, your softies won't really care, but it does make a difference on uh, your stony ones, your acrylics. So this is really for hobbyists who are really wanting to get accurate, really chasing that last little bit of success with their tank really want to dial things in. It's for that, but it's also good for finding out if you have a problem. I was talking to a customer here today and we pulled up his stuff because he's been having problems and he actually had iron at 58 parts per billion and he doesn't dose iron. And he's like trying to figure out where that came from. Well, very likely he has some sort of magnet, some sort of screw or something that's iron in there that's dissolving because his corals are starting to go down, they're starting to look stuff, so he wouldn't have known that if he hadn't done the test. Right. All right, well, I gotta get my hands on one of the mass specs. I wanna sit in my water and see how the results differ, really dig into it. Mm -hmm.